Hey folks, uh, well, I figured since I was already behind on getting this one out that I might as well uh, do a quick intro rather than just uh, the generic one that I was putting before videos before. Um, I don't really have a lot to talk about, but uh, a ton of my thinking and my work brain power is going into working on uh, my very first video essay where I try to look into anarchism in various aspects and I, I try, I'm trying to look at the ways in which it is a very wonderful utopian theory about the future as well as a practical belief system that allows for good analysis of uh, power structures now and uh, allows us to take action in the here and now to benefit those around us as well as building community. There's uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get into it, but that's kind of where I'm going with it. Uh, it's kind of a breaking down anarchism for non-anarchists uh, because there's already much discussion between anarchists uh, as to what we actually are trying, what we're doing. And we're constantly reevaluating and constantly um, changing and adapting. And uh, anarchism is a dynamic philosophy that changes and, and learns and <laughs> it is, is not rigid. Uh, so uh, that's something that I really appreciate about it. Um, I do, uh, about this particular video, um, this was recorded a few weeks ago. I had something like six or seven interviews all in one week and then I had a couple the following week. Uh, so uh, most of them were all streamed on live on Twitch, uh, which, I mean, you can go and um, subscribe or follow me on Twitch, whatever. Uh, but those disappear after 14 days. And so as a result, I also like to do like my editing and, and I want to streamline them and make them look all pretty for YouTube. Um, and, and then I send them out to everybody after that. Uh, I didn't have a plan going into this chat with Felicia. I just, we've talked before many times. We're good friends online. Uh, I've, We've known each other for many years. And so I figured we had a, a pretty good rapport and that it would result in a pretty good discussion regardless of what was actually uh, the topic. She came prepared with some stuff about uh, uh, crime, which was was great. And then I had a question about uh, Keffels, uh, which was someone I had never heard of before and who I just saw popping up in my Twitter feed, like not the actual Keffels, but like people talking about Keffels. Uh, so, so I was confused. I, I had never heard of this person before. Uh, and so she, Felicia explained all of this to me and I, I really appreciate it. And I think that we had a really d good discussion because of it. Uh, this, <laughs> as usual, it seems like all the shitty people online are on the same side of a thing including some people who are leftists or pro proclaimed leftists. Um, but yeah, don't call the cops. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's generally not good. Don't call the cops on people who are, ha have done nothing wrong and just pissed you off online. Uh, as for other online nonsense, uh, I recently have been seeing a lot of these uh, mega communism fucking people. Uh, it's obviously nonsense. It's just trolling or, or something. I know people are calling it an op, but, and some people are just like, well, this isn't even a thing we can take seriously. I don't believe that it can ever literally gain traction or actually gain traction. And because Trump worshipers, MAGA movement, the, the MAGA movement is anti-communist. So either the MAGA communists are misunderstanding what communism is or they're just ignoring the anti-communist aspect of uh, the MAGA movement. Um, I like to say, even Trump, Trump worshippers, the, the right in America and Canada, uh, anti-communists don't even know what communism is, but they are anti-communist. They hate everything to do with communism. They still believe and promote all the myths about communist states while espousing a kind of capitalist libertarian mixed with uh, an extreme social conservatism. Uh, I'm not saying that socialist states are good or, or communist states have been good in the past. Uh, I'm an anti-statist. I don't really, I don't see them as a good thing. So 
and and they have done many things that are shitty. Like uh, I'm not going to give the USSR a pass for the shitty things it did and the murder of anarchists who didn't see eye to eye with the vanguard party. Uh, I'm not going to forgive uh, communist China for killing people who ha- are drug users or for imprisoning drug users. Uh, in the same way that I'm not going to give America a pass because they espouse the word freedom a lot, but also like put people in prison for possession of drugs. Uh, if you are going to be a quote unquote good state, then there's a lot of things you have to do that aren't going to be the way that the states that have called themselves communist or socialist have acted. That said, the myths that anti-communists perpetuate about these states are often blown out of proportion, uh, are used to denigrate or, or devalue the philosophy of communism or, or the philosophy of even like anything to the left. Anyway, uh, I'm, I started this to talk about uh, the MAGA communism thing. So I guess some people online were talking about it uh, as though we have to be ready to disagree with those or to talk to those we disagree with. And that's true. We do have to be willing to uh, discuss things with those we disagree with. But it's just a, a kind of a nonsense way to look at it when we constantly are talking to people we disagree with, like all of us, everyone on the left is. Because we are, at, like, if we're the far enough left that we're a communist or an anarchist or whatever, then we're always talking to people we disagree with because we're such a small group at this point. But that's a different thing than talking to uh, outright bigots or, like, people who actively want to harm your comrades. Like, it's just nonsense. Uh, of course, uh, Jimmy Dore and, and various, the patriotic socialists have all fucking hopped on board with this stuff. Uh, apparently it's the brainchild of has infrared, uh, has, uh, the fucking, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to be ableist in the denigration of somebody's intelligence. So I'm not going to do that, but he misunderstands many things. Actually, even saying that I don't want to be ableist in the denigration of somebody's intelligence is is ableist. So I don't want to, I'm going to, I don't want to do that at all. Uh, it's just that has is wrong. And I don't know if it's intentional or because he just can't understand things. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> if you just want to be socially conservative, just be socially conservative. And we already have a lot of socially conservative people in leftist spaces like there's anti-sex work there's anti-drug there's uh there's anti-libertarianism there's you know there's literally people who are like uh no you can't be free until we have a fully socialist state which is antithetical to the actual thing the project but that's what they say and i mean whatever Everybody can disagree, but we have plenty of socially conservative people on the left already. We don't need any more. Go be a right winger if that's what you want to be. We don't want to bring in more socially conservative people. We need people who uh, uh, acknowledge uh, systemic issues and want to work to dismantle them. That's what we need. So, so get away with fucking mega communism. I don't want any of it. I don't care. Anyway, again... <laughs> it's just, it seems like, uh, it's a movement meant for, uh, right wingers who just like a socially, uh, the aesthetic of communism. And I mean, I love the aesthetic of communism and anarchism. I think they're fucking cool, but I'm, I also agree with the philosophy. Uh, I also want to make the world a better place. <laughs> and I also, uh, feel like doing things in the here and now to benefit those around me is the way to achieve that. But anyway, uh, I don't have much more to say about anything to say more to say about that. Um, So I'm going to send you to the interview. (laughs) But first, there are many ways that you can support this channel. 
and I always have other projects on the go. So look for show, look in the show notes or description box to check those out. And uh, my Patreon is patreon.com slash skeptical leftist. I deeply appreciate any support you can send my way. And I have a big thank you to Felicia for not only joining me in this episode, but also supporting me on Patreon. If you want have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me through any social media platform or by email at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. Or you can check out my super cool contact form on my brand new website, skepticalleftist.com. Thanks so much for being here and on to the interview. All right. Hi and welcome to The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist, the podcast where I talk to a variety of people to spread critical thinking, progressive politics, and left-wing philosophy. And today I'm joined by my friend Felicia. Hi, <laughs> Thanks Corey. for joining me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks Good for having Good to see you again. again. I know it's been, it's been a minute since we did a show together and I am so inconsistent. So I really appreciate you not holding it against me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. No worries. <laughs> It seems like I, I, I don't have enough communication with my online friends these days, so. It's, it's you know, I'm finding that I'm connecting with people that I used to talk to more on Facebook over on TikTok, so. Oh, okay. That's yeah, fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah reconnecting for sure. with some people I used to, you know, chill with back in the day, and I'm like, oh, hey, because, like, I can't stand, don't mess with the cord. <laughs> We're going to have cat <laughs> interruptions the entire show. You barely no see this. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> he doesn't realize that it's hot because cat body temperature is like 104 degrees. Oh, so, is that right? Yeah. So, I didn't know that. I know. I, I didn't either for a while, <laughs> for a long time. And then it's also why they feel so damn hot. So ah. for him, he's like, oh, it's hot, but it's not hot, hot, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's It's warmer than usual, but... <laughs> Still not hotter than my body temperature, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't realize that I'm dying because it's 38 C here, <laughs> 101 <laughs> degrees for those who are in the U.S. Yeah, uh, and so I'm today in, the US. in <laughs> today in Saskatchewan it's 32 degrees Celsius, which is uh, That's significantly just nice. cooler. <laughs> That's like what? That's like 80? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, something like that. Oh, it's still 90. pretty hot for okay. us. No, 90 it's is still pretty hot. hot for us. Yeah. Yeah. More than we're used like, to. 90 I can handle. At 90 degrees, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to die. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But at, at 100 degrees, I'm like, why? And it's been like two months straight. It's been like two months straight. I'm dying. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, too, it's again the hottest summer on record for straight days like this. Of course. Again. Uh, and I'm in uh, Utah, in case anyone's wondering, which is hot. And I'm not even yep. in the hot part of Utah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, yeah, the southern part gets much warmer, and I'm not. So you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Say hi. Well, no. at, least, at least it was worth a shot. There's some purring going on there, so that's yeah. Good. He's he's quite pleased with himself. <laughs> Oh, right on. Oh, that's cool. You could hear the purr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's faint, but I can hear it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, um, I guess before we get into hot. like topics, yeah. uh, are you still with the Utah Outcasts? Yeah. Yes, I am. I've been off for a couple of weeks, some weird schedule stuff in my life, but I'm back on this week. So, yes, I oh, am. That's, that's good to hear. I'm glad yeah. that, uh, that that was... show is still going on. I know. <laughs> We're so we're still so small, but you know more people should listen. It's it's a good show. I agree. Yep, some good uh, SJWs from the old atheist community. Yes. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. My computer thought it like made a sound, and I hope it's oh. not shutting off. Okay, we're good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Apparently, oh, nothing oh, happened I, on your end. No, <laughs> I don't, don't even notice. But my screen went black for a second. Oh Ooh. yeah, that's no good. No, it seems like everything's fine, though. Okay, good, good. And I know he's not pushing the button because he's on top of me. It's too hot. <laughs> you <Ugh>. gotta go. <laughs> <sighs> it's so hot. I, I'm in one of our, one of the two bedrooms, and uh, the swamp cooler doesn't really hit this one very well. We've got the ah. fan going, but one can only do so much, so. Yep, for sure. 
Uh, and I hope it's my fan isn't too loud. It's not in the room. So no, I, I, hope- I can faintly hear it, but it's not overwhelming yeah. or anything. So it's not. Should have deal. checked before. Cat! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, and no I can't close right. the door. One, there's no door on this room. And also you need the fan. <laughs> and I need the fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Uh, so before- yeah, so you're still yeah. with the Utah Outcasts. Yes. What else have you been up to lately? Um, well, I've been on a, I, I noticed that sex workers are part of the proletariat and I love that because, um, I'm on, I'm on a bit of a break from my sex work stuff. I'm planning on getting back to it at some point. Um, I finally got insurance. <laughs> it's nice. I feel so sad as an American when I have to say that. And I have an appointment, uh, with, a, with a psychologist to get on, uh, ADHD meds. Oh, finally. Okay. Like for cool. the first time since college, wow. so I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I, I kind of yeah. want to talk more about ADHD later. And sure, sure, yeah, yeah. my experiences with that. No, nope, <gasps> sounds good. Uh, I guess the first topic you said we uh, we're going to we're going to talk about crimes. I just learned, <laughs> yeah, I just learned about an awesome crime. Okay, uh, so his name I have it pulled up here on my phone, <laughs> not on the computer. Uh, but his name was Darius McCollum, and okay. he got arrested for uh, joyriding the trains, the subway in New York City. Wait okay. for it. He did it to operate them well. And <laughs> in, invariably, customers found him helpful and pleasant, and he <laughs> made every stop on time, and he just did it so he could... He just loved trains. Uh, and Just wanted to do the job yeah, well. He loves, uh, <laughs> he loves trains. And uh, yeah, like it's, it, this story is so great. Like he, the first time, uh, McCollum was first arrested in 1980 at age 15 when he drove E subway train with passengers for six stops. <laughs> to the New York Department, uh, he, he wrote to the New York Department of City Correction, uh, New York City Department of Corrections, and asked if he could drive one of their buses. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they put up, uh, they put up signs for him as like, "Keep an eye out for this guy. If you see something, say something." And uh, invariably, the passengers experienced him as friendly and helpful. Like, of course, of course, <laughs> he never put anyone in danger. Um, he's explained to reporters how he did it, which was, there's no one here. So I just got on and drove it. (laughs) (laughs) So the train's just sitting there. Yeah. And he's like, here, I'm going to get on and do the job. (laughs) Do the job properly. At 15. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Made his stops on time. Everything was safe. He was perfect. Um, That's fantastic. Yeah. He's stolen trains to operate them well and on time multiple times. Uh, cause he just loves trains and buses. So how much, how much trouble is he going to get into for this? Cause it doesn't seem like he well, did anything wrong. <laughs> he's been in too much trouble in my opinion. He has hurt no one. He, all of his crimes, crimes were victimless. Yeah. You're going to be shocked to learn that this is a black man in New York city. And, uh, so he stopped stealing trains after a while, after experiencing time in prison, which again, he shouldn't have. His crimes right. were awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He didn't and actually take the train home. No, he didn't. He didn't hold it hostage. He wasn't just. He wasn't trying to be crazy. Like he wasn't going putting anyone at risk. He just drove them properly. It's phenomenal stuff. You love to. You yeah. love to see it. Uh, I personally think that that guy should get like first of all a job. Sounds yep. like he can do the job very well. <laughs> like, yep. 100%. And he should get paid for these skills. That was an on the job. That was on the job interview right there. Like. <laughs> As yeah. far as I'm he concerned, knows how to do it. He can yeah, do it Yeah, they good. owe him wages. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, he, but so he stopped stealing tra- trains, um, but he, he would dress like conductors, not exactly like conductors, but kind of like, kind of like swag. Does that okay. make sense? And he would carry tools with him that are the standard tools for like repairing a train or something like that. So he was kind of um, blending LARPing. in. He was yeah. like, well, this was after he stopped stealing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he got out of jail and he stopped stealing. Um, unfortunately, the system broke him. 
Uh, but he was still like, he still loved trains. And so he would dress up kind like kind of LARP, but not as if he was doing anything. Okay. Um, and he's been arrested and claimed that those were burglary tools. Um, oh, for the fuck t- just, I know, I know. Um, but this guy, like, I think he's rad as hell. Like I just saw a recent like news interview with him. So he's not in prison right now. Thank goodness. I hope that, uh, they stop fucking with him. But, um, yeah. yeah, this dude, like just what a badass stealing trains to get people where they're going on time. Like it's rad as hell. I love yeah, that story. Awesome. <laughs> I hate, I hate the system around it. But that guy. Yeah. That guy deserves like a medal or something. It's cool as hell. That's, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cat <laughs> <laughs> let's just transfer the cat again <laughs> uh so like yeah, that's that just a quick doesn't farm. even actually sound like a crime really no that's what <laughs> that's what anarchy's made of right like right just yeah people just people doing can, the things that need to be done and, and you know ideally by people who love doing it yep. yep there's plenty of people who would love to to run trains and would love to do a good job at it Yep. seems like that's what we should incentivize as a society. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> like, <laughs> trains are great, and there's lots of people who love them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, I don't know, it's just like, I like my that. anarchist heart, like, yeah, yes. for sure. Stealing I like trains. that a lot. Yeah. I just we, uh, barely learned about it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have, like, actually in Canada, like, we don't have a- hardly any trains at all. And I well, and I don't know, like we use lots of cargo trains, but there's nothing for passengers or anything. So really, you have yeah. less trains than Utah. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we we have some um, light rail, and then we have uh, like one commuter train. That oh, okay. Barely anybody can use because it doesn't run often enough, and uh, <laughs> it's expensive. Even though the pump company is. Uh, supported almost exclusively through taxpayer dollars, and they, the company has been caught doing fraud with taxpayer dollars. Oh, uh, same company still running it, so, you know, private company. Um, didn't get pub, you know, nationalized or whatever. Uh, what's it was the nationalized on a state level? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, just the same shitty company doing the same. Uh, the trains don't go enough places; they're too expensive. Uh, they don't run often enough. That's a big problem here is they don't run often enough. Uh, but we do have them. And the, and the times I've taken, especially the commuter train, because uh, from where I live, that's like the that's the only one that's really around. Uh, it's nice. Okay. I like the train. I like yeah. it. It's uh, I want more. I want trains. <laughs> when I was in, uh, I went to so sh- Ontario or, to- or like Toronto a few years ago and you could take trains from uh, suburbs out of the city into the city. Oh. So, so that was pretty convenient. And I thought like, it would sure be nice to have those in more places. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, like, why isn't that a thing? Well, uh, yeah, cars are basically the worst mass transit system we could have possibly invested in. Yeah, uh, that's right. For every reason. <laughs> they're, they're just the yep. worst. Like, they're the I most think, dangerous. They're yeah, incon- inconvenient. <laughs> they take up all the space. They make everything too far away so that you have, there's no walking. They're expensive. <laughs> uh, like, uh, the every yeah, socialism is when no car, except for like hobby cars. Hobby right. cars are fine. But like, yeah, socialism is when no car. Like, yeah. <laughs> cars were the war- are the worst. Uh, from where I'm at, if like we would have like two hours if by high speed rail to get to Vegas. Okay. Wow. So like, yeah, like I, like that's just like an evening out trip. Yeah, you know for what I sure. mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you can part, come back on a train slammed and, yeah. <laughs> and you're totally Wouldn't fine. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> yeah. That would be phenomenal. You go to Vegas, get trashed, then and you then go ride home. home and everything's <laughs> fine. Yep. It would be great. I mean, my partner and I spent, you know, more than that time just going to the state above us north to get lottery tickets. So, oh yeah, geez. <laughs> like, I mean, two hours is nothing really if you're yeah. talking about like a week, like you know, we go out on a Friday night or something. <sighs> yep. I want, I want more trains. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't even actually like in 
in, in the city of Regina and in Saskatoon, there's city transit for buses, but we don't even have like a provincial bus system right now. Cool. <laughs> it all got eliminated because instead of it being a service, they looked at it as like a, uh, like a profit driven business. Yeah. And it, that's and the it same wasn't problem. profit. Yeah. It wasn't profitable. Yeah. So. Yeah. Same problem with our, with ours. Uh, the buses are ran by the same company that's, uh, that does the trains. <clears throat> Oh, so, yeah, maybe, yeah. so you could probably imagine how great that's going for everyone. Right. I yeah. don't, I hate riding the bus. I probably wouldn't hate riding the bus if they weren't packed to the damn gills every time and right. just take forever because they have to make so many stops because they don't run enough of them, you know, yeah. like yeah. it's, uh, it's awful. I hate taking the bus. Um, <laughs> see, I, I, I've never, I've never hated taking any other mass transit, like, uh, trains and stuff like that. I've taken the subway in New York, the very one. I don't know if I've taken the E train, uh, <laughs> right. but I've, I have taken the subway in New York, and that's great. It's really great, actually. I love it. Uh, yeah. So convenient. Seems really convenient. <laughs> yeah, and you also get to do rat watching. You can watch for all the rats in the subway. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. That's cool too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, there's no, there's no getting around it. Where there's cities like that there's rats and yeah so uh i don't mind them as long as they're not too close to me i'm gonna just you know whatever uh yep. but the buses here i i've t only taken them a couple of times and it's awful and i really think it's just because they're poorly it's for profit it's for profit therefore everything sucks about it yep yeah they yeah. cut all the good stuff out and they like Make yeah. sure there's not enough of them so that because yeah. they got to have them full so they're justified the fucking route, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. <sighs> Instead of what's most efficient and comfortable and safe, yeah. it's whatever makes the most money. And then yeah. all those other things we'll think about maybe if it's convenient. <laughs> if it's convenient. <laughs> if it's convenient. <laughs> yeah. If we're sober long enough to discuss it, because, you know, they're always like on something. Those, yeah. those fucking capitalist pigs. <laughs> yeah, they have their their drinking lunches and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, they super do. Uh, I did fundraising um, for a while there, and uh, then I had to hobnob with a lot of rich people. There's a reason I don't do it anymore. I can't hide yeah. the disdain anymore. Um, <laughs> but yeah. a lot of them just don't give a fuck. They don't, and why would they? They work so hard. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. They 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 work super super hard, yeah. making decisions about other people's lives that they don't give a shit about, and they don't really yeah. care if it works. Yeah. My favorite are the capitalists who run businesses that can't help but be profitable, like water or grocery stores, right. or like yeah, and then they like make some stupid change. And then they continue making profits and they're like, you see, I did something. It's like you, it's a grocery store. Yeah. People you need actually food. don't have to do anything. <laughs> you, yeah. no, you don't, you do nothing here except yeah. for make my life worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like they, they run a mortuary and it's like, look, we're so, we're such good businessmen. It's like that, that people need cemeteries. It does not matter how good or bad you are. You're going to make a profit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is a guaranteed business. Do yeah. not <laughs> like, yeah. take credit people are for gonna, it. People are going to need food. Grocery stores are not hard to make a profit on. No. That's, they, they basically run. You just put stuff in there. It'll make a profit. <laughs> yep. And there's yep. good supply. Like the, a lot of the big ones, like they have all their own suppliers all yeah. set up. So it's like. They get everything for less than you would buy at wholesale. And then yeah, they distribute it at like marked up retail costs. Yeah. I have done uh, purchasing for, okay. yeah, for groceries. When I was a cheesemonger, I also did all the purchasing. Uh, so I'm familiar with how much the markup <laughs> is. And yeah. um, like <laughs> I figured out at my last one uh, just in – the cheese sales alone, not counting uh, them buying like crackers or anything to go with it or, you know, like, oh, this I want to make something special with this, like not counting that uh, just the cheese sales alone. Uh, they were making 
more than double my hourly rate for every hour I worked. Wow. Like, yeah. They were making so much money on me. And it's like, I, you, do they know I can see this? Do they know <laughs> I can see this? Because, like, I am the one doing all the purchasing. I'm the one who built the entire program. Like, I know what everything costs. I know what your margins are. Like, yeah. <laughs> more than, like, more than me, like, 100% of my wage every hour. Every hour I worked. And that, again, that doesn't count for the hours that I'm not working because people are still buying shit when I'm not there. Right. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's absurd. Yep. Ooh. Uh, makes you. Anyway, that's why I don't do that job anymore. Yeah. That's another <laughs> one of the good many. One. Yeah. That and a former cop was uh, over all the delis there and was like, one of my bosses and he, uh, he was a cop. So, you know, fuck that guy. As I'm discovering, fuck uh, you, John Spencer. I don't give a <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> fuck you, John Spencer. You're a bad person who beat up a four year old. Holy shit. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, not did. Good. yeah. His ex-wife and her kid. That's why he's not a cop no more. Fuck you, ah. John Spencer. That story's publicly printed. You can just find it. So it's not like okay. I'm, Yep. revealing anything about the guy here. Yep, but I do sure. like talking about it because fuck that guy. Yep, for sure. <laughs> and that's the thing too. Like cops are still cops in their head, right? Oh Even my God. Even when he's they get so fired. It. So he wouldn't <laughs> shut up about it. And he loved to talk about how he liked to rule through fear. And oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And how he's from my days as a law enforcement officer. And he always give these lectures. By the way, he was terrible at food. Um, he was in charge of the delis, which includes a lot of fresh food production. And okay. uh, he was disgusting in the things he would do. He once put a bunch of my product in a cleaning supplies box and didn't tell me. And then I and then it, somebody else found it and yelled at me because my product was somewhere I didn't put in a container you're not supposed to put it in. Right. Like, but uh, if I told him, when I told him about that, he goes, oh, no, it wasn't me. It's like, who else was it, John? <laughs> uh, he would tell us to do something. And then if it didn't go well, he'd be like, I never said to do that. Of course. Yeah. Fuck no, you, that, that's pretty typical boss stuff, that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, cop, capitalist, cop, capitalist, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, same thing. Yeah. Except for cops usually do a little bit more work. Slightly. Deba debatable. Yeah, they actually have to deal with the people that they are they're oppressing. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Most, I mean, when we say deal with torture, yeah, yeah, generally, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not good things. Not actually no. like interact with on a right. human level. No, but um, be superior over for sure. Yeah. 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 So yeah, he's still. And again, uh, the, the the reason he's not a cop. It's a published story. It's not hard to find and so i don't give a shit um and um that's fair what is he gonna do fire me <laughs> <laughs> right yeah i got a union job now motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> yeah. fuck you yeah it's the best yeah for sure <sighs> yeah so uh yeah trains unions you know Speaking we were also unions, gonna oh sure no, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, we were also going to talk about the uh, Keffels, because I don't know yes. what this is. <laughs> okay. I, I'm happy to explain, uh, even though I am not a fan of Keffels. <laughs> okay. So I Keffels is a person. Keffels is a human woman. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And she uh, has, she's a pr fairly popular Twitch streamer. Okay. Um, I've never watched any of her streams. I don't really watch a lot of streams uh, streams even, often suck so there's in my <laughs> I like I'm, I, it, it's a real I have to be in the exact right mood and I kind of already have to like you <laughs> yes <laughs> so, exactly exactly um so I don't know much about her content um but she she kind of gained some notoriety by uh ratioing prominent conservatives on Twitter and you know what ratioing is, right? Yeah. Well, that's always good. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. If that was, I liked her doing that. Like yeah. she ratio. Oh, uh, an important fact. She's a trans woman. Oh, well, and, okay. and, uh, she 
ratioed J.K. Rowling, so that was fun. Nice. She's nice. ratioed Steven Crowder and Ben Shapiro and Pim Tool. Uh, <laughs> the, all the good ones. All the greats, you know. Uh, she's all the trash all gets taken. <laughs> she, she started getting blocked by a lot of them because they, like, pre- before she ratioed them. It's very funny. Uh, and all she would do is like, I've always wanted to ratio blank and she would. So it's oh, very funny. Yeah. Um, Just suddenly easy for her. Cause yeah. she's got a, a following. Yeah. She already had a following. Um, well, this actually uh, put a target on her back. Oh, okay. and As I suppose it does with yeah. those have type you, of people. Have you heard of Kiwi Farms? No. Okay, so it's um it's a website. It gets host it gets it moves around a lot. Uh it's similar to like the Chan boards where oh, it's okay. awful. Um okay. Kiwi Farms is kind of born out of trying to harass another a different trans woman to suicide. Oh, That's geez. what this community does. Wow. Um I don't think the first person that they uh targeted did commit suicide. Hmm. But, uh, but I don't someone... know, it's good. So th- I, there has been from their harassment campaigns. Um, it's really horrifying shit. Yeah, that's awful. Uh-huh. Uh, well, Kiwi Farms decided they were going after Kefels. And they, yeah. got, her, they got her swatted. Um, and, the, and, and hey. yeah, yeah, the police that's raided That's fucking her. dangerous. Yeah. Uh, she, she was woken up with a rifle in her face. Jesus. Yeah. So, like, very... Like very successful swatted. Um, uh, they also swatted a random guy's house because he, they weren't sure if that was her house or the other one, so they just swatted them both. So two people, just some random dude and her, got yeah. It's it's so awful um, and scary and like kind of makes me a little bit sick. Uh, yeah, no shit. That's and, that's like really fucked up. Yeah, and. Uh, so she goes into hiding. Oh, first of all, the police end up realizing that she wasn't the one threatening politicians. Um, Cause you know, the police fall for any old shit. Of uh, course they do. Cause they're fucking idiots. Cause they're fucking idiots. And so the police finally realized she didn't, she was swatted. She, no, she didn't do anything illegal. She wasn't threatening any politicians. And they give her all, they confiscated all of her stuff and streaming is her income. That's her full-time job. Um, so they confiscated all her stuff. She got it all back like three days later. Yes. At least but, she got it back. Like yeah. the way that civil forfeiture shit works, like it makes it pretty I know. Fucking hard, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, <sighs> civil asset forfeiture is a fucking nightmare. Yeah. They could like just suspected of a crime. They can take anything they want from you. Um, here in the United States, because it's because we live in a dystopia. We live because <laughs> it's the fucking... freest country in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking oh man! I hear about like people bitch about things uh, like in Canada and the UK. Um, I'm sure they bitch about it in other places, but you guys speak English for the most part, so I understand you. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I don't speak other languages because I'm American. Uh, <laughs> That's not, not, I've tried to learn other languages. It's been not successful. Uh, But um, you guys will complain about things like your problems in your healthcare system. And uh, like (laughs) your labor laws being inadequate. But we're and, not literally in a dystopia, yeah. <laughs> and and you're and you're right to complain. You're right. The things you're complaining are right, about are right. And I sit there and I go, "Oh my god, that's so much better than my situation. <laughs> <laughs> that's so much better than it is here. Yeah. My sixty-year-old mother doesn't have health insurance right now because she's a contracted employee for a job that requires a bachelor's degree. Wow. What the fuck? That's and fun. like. I, I, my job again, union job, it's considered to be extremely generous leave policy. It's not as much as the, just the, the vacation days that are required by law in the UK, just vacation. They also get sick and it's considered extremely generous leave here. And I'm just like, what is, (laughs) it's so bad. (laughs) It's so bad. (sighs) Okay. So Kefals. So she uh, goes into hiding in a hotel 
and right. she posts a picture of her cat on the bed. And Kiwi Farms figures out where she is from that somehow. What the fuck? And they they send um, tons of pizza deliveries to her room to harass her. <sighs> so she has to go into hiding again. And she has to stop streaming until she can make sure she's in a place where no one can find her. Right. Um, she eventually has to go to Ireland to get away from these fucks. Wow. And she has been found again. They Somebody left a note at, at her hotel. And she has to find a new place again in Ireland. Like, she doesn't even know where she is. Like, Right. Yeah. And um, her mom has been threatened. Um, she's had cousins. And then random people. Again, just random people who they think might be associated with her. Um, how can because uh, because can they, they don't because they don't care right they don't care yeah, yeah like like it's just like how can anyone who's who's on the same side as that think that they're right. on the right side like um, you're the bad guys like obviously this is awful shit like why would you right be I think in that they, well I don't know because the head of Kiwi Farms released the statement like. Oh, we're just some poor boys. Ooh, ooh, normal people. Don't bully us. Yeah. Quote unquote um, normal trolls, right? Like they're just yeah, fucking. He, it seriously was like this cry bully boo hoo. Yeah. Don't take away our com- communities is all we have. And like, it's like, yeah. oh, is that? No, you shouldn't have this. You shouldn't have this. Um, so Keffels has been on a, on a campaign to get kiwi farms removed from the internet um they got dropped by one whoever would host it host for their website okay. yeah um and i believe that the new one that they've moved to is getting pressured pretty significantly too she's actually made some really cool progress in this front in good, getting good. kiwi farms removed from the internet nice. for good yeah um and uh so it's j- just really appreciate that on the other side, um, and I'm going to try to be fair here. Right. Um, there are some people who are accusing her, she is a white trans woman, okay. um, of being racist. Now, okay, I believe we all swim in the racial bias water, right? That is the water okay. we swim in. And everyone, everyone has these racial biases, whether consciously or unconsciously. Um, yep. and for that, you know, I think that there's degrees to which we need to react with, you know, like with, um, accountability, right? Right. Yeah. 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 And also accountability kind of has to take place in a certain time. Like maybe when somebody's not on the run, that's just my opinion <laughs> from, uh. from, from one of the most horrific international harassment campaigns that's if not the most horrific that's ever existed. Yeah. International yeah, looks- harassment. But the the thing is that I'm I'm not going to say that Keffels is definitely not racist because she probably is to some level or another. Right. Um, White people are. Like, uh, I don't, you I know. Mean, yeah. I mean, every, everyone is. White <sighs> people are particularly po- prone yeah, that's to right. biases, right? And uh, so I'm not going to sit here and, like, say that she's never been problematic or she's never... Uh, done anything again i'm not a fan so i have no idea if she's said stuff on her show although yeah. that's not what i've been shown right um so there's not like I, it's not like a, a vosh where there's like clips of them saying racist shit right. out there all over the place all the fucking time <laughs> my so, god racist uh, sexist defending landlords while calling himself a libertarian socialist you can't do what the that fuck, that's not right <laughs> you, those are mutually exclusive things yep you can't think landlords are okay and be a libertarian socialist, which, by the way, Bosch is the same thing as an anarchist. It was a euphemism for anarchy. Okay, it wasn't. <laughs> it's not basically the same. It's not very similar. They're the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's right. Corey and I are libertarian socialists. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Bosch is not. I just. It's. He's a liberal. Politi- he's a liberal. He's a liberal. Po- politics.
politics isn't self ID. It's the it's what you actually believe and yeah. s- and speak to. And the it's way not yeah, the way you live, <laughs> and the way you live. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, I heard somebody describe it that way today. That uh, left politics isn't just what you believe; it's also what you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I personally try to live anarchy as much as I possibly can in my life. Uh, like, like yeah, if it's I, not, if, it's not always easy. I no. mean, we all live in a capitalist society, and we all have to, you know, survive. We don't all want to be in jail all the time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but we try. <laughs> we try. I try to, you know, um, be mindful of anarchy in my personal relationships because uh, I do believe that the politics of the personal is a thing. Yep. Uh, but anyway, it's beside the point. Vosh just <laughs> isn't one of us. He's just not. He's just not. Um, and also, he's a sexist pig. Ah, there I said it. Um, anyway, so I can't say definitively that Keffels has never said anything racist on her right. show or whatever. Um, but I haven't, nobody's provided any clips of that. Uh, there's been a couple of things that are, are she's accused of for being racist. And the first one is uh, she made fun of the inclusive pride flag. Okay. Uh, she didn't like it. She thinks oh. that it's actually more exclusive because by, uh, and she's a trans woman, so she doesn't like the trans part either. Um, hmm. But the black and brown and the trans flag added in, rather than just the rainbow, um, she feels like that's actually more exclusive because we're not talking about, we can't include everyone who needs focus all the time. Um, we, if we want to start pilling those out, we end up actually excluding issues that need focus, like disability. Um, or yeah, yeah. I mean, I get, I think I, I get what the argument, I can see the argument. I don't sure. know if I agree, but I, I understand where it's going. And from. I think that's entirely fine. Right. Like somebody yeah. else can also say, but trans people and people of color need extra focus in the queer community right now. And, yeah. uh, that's important to focus in on. And I, uh, you know what? I can also see that argument. So I don't, really have a strong opinion on this i personally aesthetically like the rainbow flag but i also see the value in the inclusive flag so i i mean aesthetically i absolutely love the inclusive flag really i I love the look of it and like i think it's amazing but teach their own right (laughs) right see and that's like such a low level thing right (laughs) yeah like who cares uh i'm not offended i'm not offended by the flag uh or think it like the inclusive flag should go away, but you know, it doesn't matter. I can see both arguments here. There is also the argument that people are only upset at the inclusive flag. Sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. Um, Cause this isn't, I'm not, I don't think this is stupid. Um, I don't know why I laugh. Cause like, this is a good argument. Uh, there's okay. the argument that people get upset at the inclusive flag because uh, wh- whenever attention is brought to black and Brown people and their issues, white people don't want to center them. And I think that's a valid argument. That's a real thing that happens. Um, (laughs) Yep. A hundred percent. That's a thing. And if you feel that's what Caffles was doing by not liking the flag, um, I, that's not what I saw, but if you, if that's your assessment and uh, then, yeah, I think that's, I think that's a perfectly valid criticism to bring up. So, um, however, I'm not certain that that is enough to say that Keffels is an abhorrent racist. Now, racist in the, you know, casual sense, but it racist in the way that it's like, fuck her for what she's going through, you know? And like, how dare you follow her? Um, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm to that level. Uh, I think it's valid right. to cr- criticize her for <laughs> her opinion on the flag. Right. Yeah, but I can, don't know that it's, is it, it is it possible for us to criticize people without being like fuck them and all their suffering? And every, right? <laughs> I, just, I don't uh, know. <laughs> Generally, another, I'm, I'm more on the hey, let's try and empathize with them, even if they aren't, you know, great. Uh-huh. Sometimes, I, and I don't expect everybody to see that the same way as I do either. And I but. just and I feel like we do need to approach things with scale. <laughs> Sure. I think that I think that just that that the flag is pretty. That's a pretty tiny. That's a pretty tiny issue to take with somebody on any issue. Um, you can personally not watch her content over that. 
yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But like, let's especially let's maybe like not if undermine that's a, the harassment campaign. Right. Yeah. Especially like if yeah. that's a thing that say say they uh, she focuses on a lot of the time. And you're like, well, I don't want to watch or constantly oh. harp on this particular topic that I disagree on. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Maybe she is. Maybe she is. I don't is. know. Um, as but. far as I've seen, it was a Twitter thread. Once. Okay. So, like. That's all I've seen. I could absolutely be wrong about that. Show Maybe me. she makes a big deal out of this all the time. <laughs> Show me a person uh, who hasn't had a shitty Twitter thread once in a while. <laughs> once in a while, right? Um. And, like, I don't, yeah, like, I just feel like that's, you know, in the scale of terrible takes or even takes, you know, bad takes, um, you know, I just, I just don't think that that's due us being like, how dare you follow her? Right. How, right. Which is the things I am seeing uh, in the in the Twitter discourse is people so, wholesale <sighs> writing her off. Uh, just a couple more sure, accusations sure. of racism. Because okay. I want to be fair. Yep. Yep. Um, Another one is claiming that she had she had her already audience target an Asian an Asian woman uh, for a take she didn't like. Now I this is this argument I don't think is super valid. Okay. Um. So I'm just gonna disclose my bias here. Uh. So a white a white woman not Keffels wrote a book about dumplings and noodles. And she also, she was a scientist before that. So she wrote it from a scientific perspective. Okay. A Filipino woman, Filipina, I don't know the, so, the syntax, so I apologize if I'm saying it wrong, but a Filipino woman uh, tweeted out about the book and said, why is a white woman writing about noodles and dumplings? Okay. Um, I personally think be because it's fine. I mean, as long as she's, being inclusive, like she's being aware and she's being respectful and she's being accurate about like, it. it's fine. Actually. It, yeah. we actually it's, it's actually good to learn about other cultures. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. So yep. I, I got to say, I'm, I, I don't agree with that. So then Keffels retweeted her uh, from what I've seen at the time, Keffels had less followers than the woman who tweeted out. Why did a white woman write this? Okay. Um, and she retweeted that with, because they're delicious. That's it. Oh. And that's the end. That and that is getting claimed that she she created a dog pile by doing that on a woman of color. And that I sorry, no. Using Twitter as Twitter is, that's and especially when Kevils had less followers than this woman had at the time. Right. I'm sorry. If that's true, but I have reason to think that because this was before Kevils blew up. Uh, that okay. she tweeted this. Um, hmm. I just can't. I'm sorry. That I'm not. I'm not. I'm not with that. She is allowed to disagree with a woman of color about something fairly minor. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I have, and I and yeah. So I <laughs> I I do think that that accusation is absolutely wild. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're a couple of white folks, uh, right? But but disagreeing with people of color on. It, sir, some issues is not a fireable offense, right? Like it's not like in, in a cancelable opinion, offense. <laughs> in my opinion, I will I, continue I to disagree with some people if they are conservative, whether they are people of color or not. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't think just retweeting somebody counts as sticking dog your pile. fans for a dog pile. Yeah. Like, I don't think that that's, I, I, it could be if you were constantly doing it and you had a huge following, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just I, uh, or or if if the rhetoric you use in your quote tweet is particularly inflammatory, mm -hmm. right? Like that. All she said is because they're delicious. Yeah, that's so, the whole tweet. I mean, I didn't I didn't see it, but judged on, based on the context, it doesn't sound terrible to me. To me, um, yes, and we are a couple of white folks, so you know whatever. If you think I'm wrong, grain of salt. <laughs> yeah, that's fair and valid, but. To me, I'm just not going to. And then the last one I've seen, I can't verify any of this. Um, okay. That she has, quote, never used her platform to support a trans person of color or black woman. Could be, I can't remember if it was just of color or black. Okay. To support a black trans woman. And she's blocked uh, black people who have pointed that out. Now, she okay. hasn't. 
she hasn't had a large platform for very long. I think only about a year or so. Um, I've seen, I went on her Twitter briefly and I saw that she absolutely has supported people of colors, GoFundMes. Uh, she's tried to rate fundraise for uh, trans kids in Texas and Alabama. Is okay. that one of the ones? I can't. One of my one of the more evil states, you know, like mine's about to be. Uh, <laughs> and, like, like half of fucking America. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I and I and I can't like. There's a fairly high black population in Texas and Alabama. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I don't know if we can say, but like she also, I, I, and I have no idea if she's had black people on her stream. Um, <laughs> Cause again, I've never watched it. So I didn't bother arguing with that claim. Um, okay. And if she hasn't, um, I do know her producer and editor is black. So, okay. okay. And there are people of color that she's spoken to and stuff, but if, if she hasn't, I know, in particular got not, eyes on yeah uh, that's a valid criticism sure yeah uh, it's something it, that when somebody says to me that I need more guests from a particular uh, group then I have to take that it seriously right like I right. have to think about that and for it, sure but we do all have blind spots too so it, maybe it's not that she's an abhorrent racist because of this but maybe she's just not observing her own blind spots yeah, and I do know for a fact that some of the people that she's blocked have also harassed her. Some of the black women have also harassed her and have a history of harassing people. Um, they are, one of them is, at least one of them is also a trans woman, um, but she, her and a friend harassed another trans woman saying they were going to eat her pig for months on Twitter. And she would start up a new accounts and go and say she was going to eat this woman's pet pig. Like her pet. It was awful. Yeah, like, I was like, geez, like, so they're known for harassing people. Um, and so I know at least two of these black women have harassed Keffels in the past. She can block them if they're harassing her. Yep, that's right. That's I have fair. also, I've also blocked, blocked some black people. So in my time, uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not every black person has ever disagreed with me, but, you know, sometimes people are bad people. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, regardless not every, of their identity. Not everybody is, yeah, exactly. Sometimes people are just bad people regardless of their identity. Yeah. <laughs> I've it's also just, blocked some trans people and some other queer people and some bisexual women. Yep. So, like, oh, I don't want to tell you. Some people suck. Uh, <laughs> yep. Um, but I, she, it's possible that uh, some of the other people were just giving her good faith criticism and she was not receptive. That's also possible, right? Right. Uh, as far as I know, it's I mean, and knowing white people, mm, kind of even probable. Uh, yeah, like, especially if it's in the mix of the har harassment and then somebody has a good faith criticism and then you go, well, yeah, fuck you too. And like. That, yeah, right. Like, maybe, <laughs> like. <sighs> Unjust, um, unfair, but still so happens. She's responded to this. Okay. And she said uh, she, she understands that black trans women face way worse than white trans women do um that it's it's horrible and mm. now remember keffels is still being internationally pursued by an online harassment campaign she just responded to this uh accusation she took the time still wow. um and uh she said she hasn't done good enough at represent at, at using her platform to spread black voices uh particularly black trans voices and okay cool yep. that's good um, to me, though, this is where I'm starting to get concerned. Um, right. None of these are particularly <laughs> egregious. You know what I mean? Um, sure, she could be a horrific racist that we just haven't seen yet. That is entirely possible. Uh, but these are all <laughs> fairly mundane, uh, valid, all of them fairly valid criticisms, but not, in my opinion... Ones that we should disavow her right. entirely and not support this project of getting Kiwi Farms off the internet and not follow her because again she's is it is it too much of good. a <laughs> is it too much of a coincidence 
that she's being accused of a ra- of being an important racist at the same oh, time as this yeah. Kiwi Farm stuff is going on. Like, that seems like mm-hmm. hell. Uh, maybe, seems a little coincidental to yeah, me. Maybe there's some seems bad like- faith there. <laughs> I saw one. This dude was tagging in Chill Goblin, um, Jack Saint, you know, okay. um, and uh, We're in Hell. Okay. He was tagging them in and saying, how dare you follow this person? They're like, you didn't even tell us who we're following. What is going on here? And <laughs> it was Keffels. And okay. he was like, and they were like, I, we're following what she's doing and what she's going through. This is really important. And yeah. he was like, oh, so that's not important to the suffering my friends are going through because of her. And uh, I went, do you want to tell us specifically? specifically what Keffels did to your friends that you think is on the level of her harassment campaign. Yeah. Um, and uh, no, he didn't, he didn't want to tell us. Of course not. Of course uh-huh. not. Yeah. That sounds, um, it, got, it sounds sussy to me. <laughs> this was a white yeah. guy, by the way, this was, a, this was a white oh, guy. Naturally. Not, yeah. Naturally. A lot of them are. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, this is starting to sound sussy that, Right as she's gaining traction against Kiwi Farms, some very, what I would call, outsized responses to what she's being accused of Mm -hmm. uh, are coming up. And I can't help but notice that this keeps happening to femme, femme people and women, particularly trans women, and often trans women of color or trans folk of color. Um that every time they criticize somebody who doesn't want to be criticized, all these bizarre accusations of their past wrongs Mm. just keep getting dug up from nowhere. And then people are being attacked for being even associated with her. And it's like a snowball effect. And I feel like we've seen things like this with Mm. Coffee Points and Cat Black and Professor Flowers and Lindsay Ellis. <laughs> yep. And it just seems to keep happening. It's it doesn't certainly it? seems suspicious, doesn't it? <laughs> uh-huh. And so I feel like there's a problem in these criticisms. Not that we shouldn't take criticisms of her blind spots seriously. Maybe we can address them when she has actual time to address them. <laughs> and she's not being right. chased across oceans. Yep. Like I just a thought, um, but I mean, obviously, a lot of these are valid criticisms. Some of them, not so much, in my opinion. Uh, like you know, like she's getting my friends harassed somehow. That no proof of. Oh, and that's another thing. A lot of these accusations come with no proof. Right. Uh, there will yeah. be just like somebody being like, "She is racist," and people, somebody will go, "How?" and they'll be like, "Oh, so now you want black women to explain to you how?" And it's like, kind of, yeah. I would yes. like some explanation. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, like I'm not actually. saying that I'll deny, I, I'm not saying that I'll dismiss your explanation if you give it to me. I'm, I'm curious. I just, I need to understand exactly what you're talking about because yeah. otherwise, what do you want me to do? Oh, what you want me to do is not support her. Yeah. Got it. While she's dealing with this Kiwi Farms thing. S- uh-huh. S- s- for some reason. For some reason. Hmm. Yeah. And these are all definitely real accounts for sure. I'm sure. I, I haven't spotted any <laughs> any that are, but like, I'm sure every one of these that are definitely, definitely black women for real doing, yeah. who are <laughs> for yeah. real definite, for sure. They're definitely, not, definitely. They didn't just like grab a picture off the internet and use that picture on their Twitter Mm-mm. account. That's No yeah. one would ever do that. No. No, no one lies. Everybody's on honest on the internet. Everyone's honest on the internet. That's what people say. <laughs> Everyone's honest on the internet. That's, that makes perfect sense. Oh, it's actually illegal. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, I remember yeah. somebody telling me that, that you can't lie on the internet. Oh, did you see it on the internet? Yeah. That's how you yeah. know it was real. That's how, that's how you know, know it was real. Exactly. Just how, yeah. If you saw it on the internet, it's true. So. Mm-hmm. so anyway, that's what's going on with Keffels. 
Okay. Well, now yeah. I know. And now I feel like I need to support Keffels and be like, hey. Right? At, least, <laughs> at least keep an eye on the situation. Yeah. Uh, bring attention to the Kiwi Farm situation. And um, kind of like when she's doing a big push at uh, – because she's been – the, she's been going after the owners of these hosting sites. Right. Specifically. And um, some of you be like, oh, she's getting harassed. So she wants her. Yes. They're the ones who are profiting off of this. Yes. yes. The ones they're the, the ones who are, they're the ones facilitating <laughs> this. Yes. We dogpile these capitalists. That's yes. good. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> when, I'm not, not saying get them <laughs> swatted. Right. Yeah. I'm nobody's saying, calling the cops. Right. Like, right. <laughs> don't call the cops. <laughs> Don't go with the cops. Just bug the shit out of them and their staff. Yep. Yep. Because they have a staff, too. Kevils doesn't have a staff. She's got, like, a producer editor and her mom. (laughs) (laughs) Don't harass her mom. (laughs) Don't harass her mom. Like, oh, it's awful. And I am now seeing um, Christiosity. Do you know her? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she's on Kiwi Farm, one of their lists. Oh no! They post they posted pictures of like her family members and also random people not associated with her because they get ro- th- shit wrong constantly. Of course. So like, um, because she's been vocally supporting this too. Um, so like, this fight can't we can't stop the energy behind this fight. And Keffels yeah. has a huge platform for this. Right. So at the very least, these criticisms should be addressed. But we also really need her support behind getting Kiwi Farms off because this is dangerous. This is dangerous and scary that they exist. So uh, my conclusion is uh, when she has the proper time, we should have a good faith, a good faith discussion about her blind spots. There we go. And we should, you know, do uh, instead of retributive justice, maybe give her a chance, right? Yep. Yeah. When she's not being her we're life not cops. Being threatened. <laughs> we are not cops. We should stop acting like cops. Yep, that's right. Um, and on that same side, I'm not gonna be shitty to any black women who are frustrated uh, about this Fair. or anything, because uh, that seems counterproductive. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so yep. on that same note, I'm not gonna be like fuck you. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I've also seen some weird ones like that. Like any leftist who doesn't like Keffels is clearly not really a leftist. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, what? <laughs> yeah, you, I don't think you get to do that. <laughs> no, I don't. On the on the other side, uh, there's also some people who are being real weird about it too. So there's I'm always, not saying there's always these people being real weird about shit. On <laughs> they gotta, they gotta be weird. I don't know why. Just. Be normal. <laughs> Think be, about or it. Yeah, be weird. Be weird in cool ways. You yes, know, cool that's fun right. Ways. Yeah, yeah. That's like right. paint murals in your house because even fuck the resale value and like uh, I don't know, uh, paint your nails or something. You know, weird. Yeah, yeah. Do something cool. Be yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but but don't, don't be. Yeah. Don't, don't be, be like parasocial. <laughs> don't don't join harassment websites. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah. stand national leaders, please. Don't don't, don't do nations that. Nations in general. Yeah, that's like b- nation states. Boo. That's nation bad. States. Weird. Don't do that. Bad weird. It's <laughs> bad weird. It's, oh oh, I'm gonna lick boots as a personality. That's. I mean, unless that's your thing, actually. You know what? Okay. That's actually yeah, in fine. some ways that's fine. If but in other ways, that's not <laughs> If you're literally licking boots consensually, that's g- good weird. Yes. If you're metaphorically licking your the, the, the boots, boots of, of the your oppressors, oppressors <laughs> that's bad weird. That's bad weird. <laughs> yes. We have to be very specific about this. <laughs> <laughs> Context is everything. Yeah. There's good weird. boot licking and bad boot licking. Yes. <laughs> if it's horny, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> if it's horny consensually. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because, like, also there's people. <laughs> we don't want I've oppression going work. on. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. There's there's some people who really think that uh, the consensual is uh, buzzy. It's not. doesn't matter yeah. who it is. <laughs> no, that's right. Uh, I've also been a woman on the internet, so. Right. 
which is yeah. an advantage I've had. I've never had to deal with that. So, I, you know what? I'm glad. This sucks. <laughs> Sounds uh, awful. I don't. I I don't want to do it. What? I don't understand the motivation to send weird, the weird horny messages. You know, not you, but the royal you. Yep. Uh, your gender uh, <laughs> does this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Yes, I don't know why they do it, but they do it. Yeah, and it's weird. Don't be weird. Don't be, be good. Weird, weird, not bad. Weird. Yes, <laughs> consensual weirdness is fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like you know, other people's boundaries. You just right. I, yeah, yeah, and don't. Oh, whatever. It's fine. But uh, <laughs> it's not fine. Actually, that's the whole point of this. Exactly. Nothing's fine. Nothing's um, fine. It's all bad. So yeah. Like my nuance, like my nuanced opinion is that uh, Kethel's is definitely far from criticism, uh, from what I can tell, and hopefully we can get her safe and settled somewhere where she's not under attack, yeah. and uh, and then you know I think it would be good to address these things, like some some of these concerns, um, but. Uh, until then, maybe not everyone's operating in good faith with these with these accusations. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I kind of feel like it's not uh, <laughs> for a lot of it. Uh, so with be careful. Like- <sighs> Just be really careful, especially when they're asking you to go after femme people slash women, uh, especially if they're they're trans or gender nonconforming. Um, please. Please take an extra second before you decide that accountability needs to be held right the fuck now. Yeah. Cause a lot of this is meant to silence them. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm also not a fan of cat black. And I was like, I saw some of the shit coming her way and I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah no, that's right. <clears throat> Although I guess I, I can't say I'm not a fan of cat black, but I also can't say I am a fan of cat black. So I mean, I, 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 she seems like a nice person. She seems like a fun person to hang out with. Yeah. Um, if she wanted to be my friend, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but her content just wasn't one that was like, it wasn't my vibe, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So like, there's people who's like, who some, some of their content just, it's not my vibe, but I, who I still have respect for and whoop, yep. knocking things over. Yeah. And I definitely have. Uh, tremendous respect for Kat. Just, yeah. I mean, not that she cares what I think of her. Right. She doesn't know who I am. <laughs> Everybody's Contra waiting points. for our approval. <laughs> Natalie Wynn liked one of my tweets once, though. So. Oh, geez. You're basically yeah. a superstar. I know. She's my best friend now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, and that's, Maggie I used Mayfish. to tell people that about Robert Evans. He liked one of my tweets once, so I, we're buddies. Oh, so you're best, you're best friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Robert Evans once had a conversation with me on Twitter. Oh, geez. Me wow. and my sister. Uh, we, I, we were on a road trip to a family reunion in Idaho. And I made my family listen to Behind the Bastards. Nice. Uh, and they had a great time. And they loved it. Uh, and it was back when he was plugging Doritos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the <laughs> yeah. old episodes. <laughs> yeah. This was, this was several years ago. Um, and my sister was like, fuck. Now, when we stop, I need to get Doritos. So I tweeted at him her buying Doritos specifically because of his plugs. Nice. And uh, he went back and forth with us a little. So, yeah. So, I'm, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty well known. You're like a a a, famous person. Exactly. (laughs) When I get my ADHD medication, who knows? Who knows what I'm going to be capable of? Yep, absolutely. Because mostly I can't start anything now <laughs> my my partner is uh currently finding the right prescription for her adhd yeah. meds so like last time her her psychiatrist told her to double her dose but, whoa but then she did and it made her really sick so she <gasps> so she went back to this the old <sighs> dose and like uh, it's, it's it can be really tough yeah it's not easy i mean i've been diagnosed before um but i was a kid uh, not that it goes away, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, but I, I recently did an online evaluation, and it basically came back like, "Yeah, 
Like, yeah. not officially, but yes. Right. Uh, <laughs> now you just got to go to the doctor and get them to do it. Uh, and that's actually what I wanted to talk about. But you should have me on again because I want to talk about this some other time is reframing what disability means uh, in, in our perspective and sure. how and, and disability is an identity. So because I'd like to talk about that a little more. But I feel like we've been we've, we've, we've dedicated some time and some much some good time to Keffels. I think this is an important issue to talk about. So, yeah, that's <laughs> It's been, yeah, we're over an hour already, so it, it, it must have been a, a good conversation about it. <laughs> I hope so. I hope it was good. I think so. I'm, no, I'm not a good judge. <laughs> <laughs> I like trash, so hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess hi. the last thing to do then is to say, uh, where can people find you and your content? You can find me. Uh, at Utah Outcast, so not not at uh, the podcast slash YouTube slash Twitch. You can find us on uh, Utah Outcast. We stream every Saturday night at eight PM Mountain, um, and uh, eight PM ish. Uh, and we are all queer. We're all lefties out here in Utah, so that's pretty cool and unusual. Yep. Um. And you can find me on Twitter at Arden Dread. That's A R D E N D R E D D. That is not my name. Because <laughs> that's the different. That's my new account. <laughs> I got sick of the other one when my 700 followers, because I am very cool. Do you want to tell them where to find you? This is Orzo, if anybody's wondering. And that's <laughs> at Orzo on Twitter. <laughs> I don't have an Instagram for him <laughs> oh, okay. because I I hate Instagram. <laughs> I hate using it. It makes me depressed. That's fair. <sighs> no, that's fair. Uh, man. Uh, and you can also, I don't know, find me on TikTok. Sorry. Shush. Don't. Sorry. It started playing. <laughs> uh, at Red lush that's r-e-d-l-u-s-h 27 that is when i start doing uh the sexy stuff again that also will be where i do some promotion but right now i'm not and so you can see videos of or so you can see some of my art and you can cool. hear me uh do some politics videos there very cool when i feel like it <laughs> <laughs> no that's awesome well thank you so much for your time yeah, thanks for having me. It's always fun to catch up. <laughs> All right, folks, that's everything. Thanks for watching and or listening. Remember to share this show with your friends and on the social media site that you use the most. Thank you to everyone who supports this show on Patreon. I really appreciate it, and it helps me spend more time on this and my other projects. If you want to contribute, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical, skeptical lefty. If you can't contribute financially, then a five-star rating or a, and a review on the podcast app of your choice or one of the podcast review sites like Podchaser would be great. If you want to find more from me, then check out the show notes for links to all my stuff or check my website, skepticalleftist.com. There you can check out my other show, From Many People's Strength, which is a podcast about Saskatchewan politics. Uh, you can check out the videos that I do with my friend Damien Marie at Hope and all my old content from the Brainstorm podcast. You can also find the links to my Discord, Reddit, and Twitch. Uh, you can contact me through my website or by emailing mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. My Twitter is at skepticallefty, and my Facebook page is the Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. Thanks so much for watching or listening, and try to get involved with something in your area, and let's all work to make the world a better place. 